As many of you have noticed, I haven't posted a video in about the past five months, and that's because my life is completely different now. I decided I no longer wanted to be on the road for a bunch of reasons I'll go over. I actually ended up selling my Synchro. That is gone, sold. I ended up picking up a 24 Tacoma as the replacement and as my main daily driver. And I moved in with my girlfriend and her dog into a house in the Tahoe area. So yeah, it's fair to say I am no longer doing van life. I'm sure this will come as a shock to many because I talked about the van life a lot and I still do think it's an awesome way to live. But for me at least, it was an awesome way to live for about two years. <laughs> I did just a little over two years of full nomadic life, first living out of my CRV and then the van, and towards the end, it just kind of seemed like enough. The days, then weeks, then months, then years of trying to find a place to sleep every single night, constantly trying to find somewhere to shower and wash off and use the bath and all that kind of deal. I loved that because it did make life a little bit harder and it kind of takes your mind off a lot of the stuff that doesn't matter, but it quite simply just wasn't something that I felt like I needed anymore or something that I really wanted anymore. There's many amazing things about being on the road along with one of the biggest ones, the freedom that comes along with you can literally live and go anywhere you possibly could imagine, at least within the continent, I guess. But that constant uncomfortable life combined with it being really hard to have a solid social life on the road, like having a consistent group of friends is essentially impossible unless you're in the same spot. And if you're in the same spot, it's like, why are you doing van life to begin with? Kind of brought the whole thing to an end to me. I realized my priorities over the last two years shifted towards more valuing relationships and friendships. And of course, I, you know, my girlfriend and everything now. Good to hang out with this big boy, huh, too? Come here, Bodie. Come here, Bodie. This is Bodie. He's one year old. He's very cute. We're still training him. He's doing all right, it's a little bit of a shithead, but other than that, <laughs> he's real cute. Yeah, it's funny because van life is kind of all it's hyped up to be, and not at all at the same time. It, it, all the good parts that people talk about are 100% true, and the bad parts that a lot of people bring up are, are true, but it kind of just depends on who you are and how long you can handle that kind of lifestyle and why you're doing it to begin with. One of the biggest things I found while being on the road and meeting everyone else who's doing van life is that a lot of people choose that lifestyle because something went wrong. I don't know another way to put it, but something went wrong in their life and van life was the conclusion that they came to afterwards. I'm not saying that everyone on the road is a broken mess. Most people I met on the road were absolutely wonderful people, but the van life and constantly traveling and escaping and you know going other places, not having consistent basically anything, definitely seemed as a pretty solid form of escapism for a lot of people. And uh, for me, it wasn't really that. I was really trying to make YouTube work and trying to be really successful on that because that's what I wanted to do forever. And van life was more of a route or a path for me to uh, become successful on YouTube and to create videos and tell stories, what I've always wanted to do essentially. Along with the fact that I never really traveled as a kid because I grew up incredibly poor. We didn't have money to do that. That just wasn't an option. So the idea of traveling and adventuring was also very appealing to me. But yeah, van life as a long form lifestyle, it's hard to recommend. You have to be this very specific person that's okay with being totally uncomfortable all the time, okay with dealing with new scenarios every single day, constant stress every single day, getting the knock at night, not being able to sleep in certain places, again, finding a place to sleep every single night. Uh, the, that was also one of the things towards the end that kind of kicked me out of or like changed my mind. I was like, I got to do something different. It was, I, I value sleep a lot and it was really hard to get a good night's sleep uh, unless I went into the wilderness, went on a service road campsite somewhere. Even at actual campsites, it's hard to get a good night's sleep because people are throwing parties, fire, smoke coming into your van whatnot. And it just got to that point where like, I'd have like a week straight of like not being able to get a good night's sleep. And I finally get a good night's sleep. I'm like, oh my God, I feel so much better. And then it'd be like more terrible nights of sleep. And so again, all these much harder ways of living compared to modern day, very comfortable lifestyle lifestyles that we all have nowadays. You have to be someone that can deal with that very well. Also very much enjoys their alone time. I very much enjoy my alone time. I'm definitely an introvert by heart. Uh, and even with that being said, 
whenever you live the van life, it becomes very apparent how important people are and relationships and hanging out with other humans are. Because I hung out with friends on the road, I met a whole bunch of amazing new people, but still, I don't know if it's necessarily loneliness, but it's just like, all right, I want to hang out with people. I want to have social interactions. I never, I, there was times I felt kind of lonely. I've never really been someone to feel lonely, but if you are someone who is like that and feels lonely and kind of isolated, then it's just, you, you gotta, it's it's a hard lifestyle for that. <laughs> so the biggest thing, if someone is watching this video and considering van life that I would consider, is the initial idea, the thumbnail, the shield of van life is very exciting. The opportunity to be anywhere, go anywhere, tons of adventure, tons of traveling is so appealing, it's like candy. It's just like you want it, you want it, and you can't wait to get it. But there's a harsh reality behind that of all the reasons I just mentioned, and it's definitely not all what you see on the internet. And while the fun parts, the highs are really high, they're so fun. You went on an adventure into the mountains, you just happened to stumble upon an amazing group of people and you had a ton of fun with them. It was an amazing couple of days, you know, whatever, new experiences. But then you need to drive for the next three days straight and you don't see anyone, don't have any social action for three, four, five, a week straight. You barely get any sleep. It's been, you've been sweaty as crap in your van because even though if your, your van has AC, you're sitting most of the time and that doesn't have AC. A whole bottle of maple syrup spilled in your cabinet and you're cleaning that up while you're all sticky you can't shower I mean it's just it's like endless kind of stuff like that and you think like oh it happened once it happened twice it happens all the time and you have to be able to deal with that so yeah that's my recommendation just take that into account taking the realities of what van life really is and if I were to recommend someone who's looking into this kind of lifestyle for a year maybe two I think it's absolutely amazing uh, I, I would go more along the year as I'm someone who likes uncomfortable scenarios. I like putting myself in weird places and doing weird things. I don't mind being uncomfortable or cold or hot or whatnot. And I could still like after two years, I was like, all right, it's time to, time to be done. But if you can plan to do it for a year and then kind of set yourself up from there and see if you want to move on, I think that is the best way to do it. Oops. Come here. You're making a bunch of noise back there. You're making a bunch of noise back there. So yeah, set yourself up for a year. Do that. If you absolutely love it, you're like, I want to do this forever, then, you know, then you can move on from there. But I think a year is a good time frame to be like, all right, I did it. It was fun. Amazing adventures, experience, et cetera, whatnot. I'm kind of looking for a more normal life at this point. And that's kind of what I came to. That's not to say I'm gonna stop making videos. I love making videos. I'm gonna keep making videos. I have this new Tacoma that I'm gonna be doing an entire build series on. I already have wheels and tires on it, which is awesome. Very excited for it. But instead of me trying to come up with a new YouTube video every single day and every single week, it's more gonna be whenever I want to as like a passion project and just whenever I can. I have a really busy schedule. My girlfriend's really busy and building out the truck will come in waves essentially. So I'm gonna make as many videos as I, as I can and more importantly, as many as I want. And then we'll kind of just move from there. For all my Vanagon people, I know I sold the Vanagon. I'm not a part of the cult anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> but my channel has always, at least to me, been more about my ability to tell a story in a fascinating way and entertain people. Uh, the Vanagon was just a method for that, essentially. So the Tacoma will be my new method. I have a whole bunch of exciting stuff I want to do to this and exciting videos that I want to make that I'm, I'm very happy to uh, have in the horizon and I'm, again, really excited to make. But yes, the Vanagon is gone. Uh, I, sad to say, I don't really miss it. Vanagons are totally unique and a bunch of fun and the community behind them is amazing but they break a lot and the parts that you can buy to replace them don't last very long so they break again and you either have to be a full-time mechanic or have the deep wallet to pay someone certified to work on the van or like knowledgeable enough to work on the van uh, to actually work on it and fix it correctly especially with the synchros that transmission is is rough every 50,000 ish miles having to rebuild it and maybe it lasts maybe it doesn't you know it's a whole bunch of questions I love that van. It was so fun, so unique. Glad I got to experience it. Not exactly sad that it's gone, not gonna lie. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to unfollow because I don't have the van anymore, I totally understand. Van was cool. You like vans, go for it. For all the people that plan on sticking around, thank you very much. Like I said, I just like telling stories. I like making videos. I like doing cool stuff and sharing it with people who, you know, hopefully love the same stuff. So thank you for sticking around. Like I said, a whole bunch of uh, amazing, exciting videos to come up if you're into off-road builds and the new Tacoma 
and uh, some DIY stuff hopefully, maybe DIY camper, sneak peek. Yeah, I really just wanted to make a video updating all of my followers as I have gotten a lot of questions and even emails. So thank you guys for being worried enough to reach out to me through email, that was kind of cool. And to inform people that are considering van life, if you are considering van life, please feel free to send me an email or leave a comment on this video if you have a, a specific question or concern. And my best advice is just to really think through it think why you're doing it. I actually do think if you are going through some sort of a crisis or some sort of a hard spot in your life, it can really help. I have met people where it really helped them in that time in their life. So I, I wasn't saying that was a bad thing. So I honestly, I do think it can be valuable for that kind of scenario. But my main point is that you see the people that have been doing it for five, seven, 10 years. I thought that was probably gonna be me at some point. And over the last two years, uh, it's just, it, I, if I kept going, you know, I maybe would have just met so many people and had so many friends. I would have had more of a social connection on the road, but I wanted to be planted. I wanted to be in one spot. I wanted to have a shower and a toilet every night and a bed that I could crawl into at 10 p.m. and not be woken up by buses or horns or people screaming, drunk people partying. <laughs> yeah, I do very much still enjoy camping. You probably saw the tent on the back of the Tacoma. I've been camping with my girlfriend over the last couple months. Still love camping and overlanding and using my vehicle as a way to go out and explore places I wouldn't be able to explore otherwise. I think that is awesome and I still love sharing those experiences. But as far as living on the road, that is no more for me. Little, little Riles, no more living on the road. Four high here. This is my first ever actual like four wheel drive, four high, four low truck. And I love it so far, it's awesome. And oh yeah, thank you to everyone who has been following along with all of my builds, the CRV and the van. Uh, I have some pretty awesome fans and a little community behind me on YouTube, which I am just, I, I, I love it so much. It, it's awesome to interact with you guys and the messages that I got even while I didn't post for five months were uh, really heartwarming and I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to keep posting and uh, keep trying to entertain you guys. <laughs> but anyways, thank you to you guys uh, for the people considering van life watching this video. Good luck, I hope it goes well. Again, message me if you have any questions. Uh, on Instagram is probably the easiest way if you really wanna do that. Otherwise, thank you for watching this slow, just kinda talking head video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye